What is up, Packers fans, and welcome back to another episode of Packer Report TV. I am your host and the publisher of that very website, Ross Uggum, and today you are getting my three key takeaways from Green Bay's win over Indianapolis in kind of a must-win spot. I talked about it a little bit um, when previewing the game and just how um, difficult it is for 0-2 teams to make the playoffs, I think 11%. Of uh, teams that have begun their seasons with an O and two mark um, have made their way to the postseason. So obviously, you know, you're not going to have a must win, must win on the 15th of September. But statistically, this is about as close as it gets. And you you you're in a situation uh against a team in Indianapolis that I I think <laughs> Folks think it's going to be okay. I mean, I understand they're going to, right? I, but, boy, you you come out with a schedule for the Colts and um, send them to Houston and, or, excuse me, hosting Houston and then, and then uh, on their way to Green Bay. Now, I, I think the Colts probably, and, and all Colts fans, were worried about 0-2 because they thought they were going to have to see C.J. Stroud and then Jordan Love. And that's, that's obviously the key takeaway of this game, um, which would be number one for me. And that's Malik Willis, and more importantly, the game plan surrounding Malik Willis. You have a a fifty three rush to fourteen attempt. Um, as as somebody who's you know been a part of or covered uh, North Dakota State football for as long as I have, and and for all of you that that uh, not not the the dairy raid or whatever they're calling what's going on with Wisconsin right now, but you know what what the artists formerly known as Badger football. That's what we're used to seeing in, in the sense that. Um, you know, four to one run pass, <laughs> things of things of that nature. Uh, that has not been the case with a lot of uh, you know, what we've seen historically from the Packers. Of course, great quarterback play from Brett Favre and then Aaron Rodgers, and then of course Jordan Love. Um, but but protecting Willis and really, I mean, you look at a 82.4 QBR, you look at a rating of 126.8. Um, 12 of 14 passing, no turnovers. They were able to sprinkle in the pass in a way that was successful. They were able to sprinkle in the pass um, in a way that made sense. But um, even with as much as the Colts struggled, uh, you know, against Joe Mixon and and the Houston Texans, as many yards as they gave up on the ground, I don't know how successful this game plan would have and and, and could have been um, if it was just, Everything that uh, uh, you know, the the inside zone, split zone, you know, um, twelve personnel, just stuff that they normally run. They they had to get other things involved. They were able to um, get Malik Willis involved. Six rushes for forty one yards. Obviously, Josh Jacobs, uh, a tremendous workhorse in that he had a hundred and fifty one yards on thirty two carries and was highly successful uh, in the first half of that football game. But you saw orbit motions and arc motions and end arounds and 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 stuff like that. And Dusty and I'll go over a lot of that tomorrow. Try and get into more of the intricacies, but um, using motions to just freeze linebackers to to create angles for the running backs. You know, the backside linebackers that would normally be able to fill that gap and make the play. Well, they're going out on on orbit runs and 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 sure, right? There's, um, for example, the, the Bull Melton uh, end around or the Bull Melton sweep that that the the play side edge blew up right that's um that's going to happen right you, that's that's why those plays aren't run over and over and over again i mean you have t- the athletes are too good at the nfl level you just hope that running those plays then um gets one of those edge defenders out of position so you can run something you know kind of where he used to be it's all a cat and mouse game it's just you know at this point i think most most folks assume that it, you, that cat and mouse game needs to be in the passing game, not in the running game. Now, can you win a Super Bowl like this? No, but can you survive until Jordan Love comes back? Yes, yes, you can. Um, yeah, you know, I, I would say I have a lot of, of positive things to say um, about the defense, but the, the the number two, I guess, key point that I'm going to take away from that game is. Um, that they need to do something about Keyshawn Nixon and Quay Walker. Uh, you know, I was, this will be the 20,000th time I've said it. I was wrong about, about Jordan Love and um, never, never happier to be wrong, right? Um, 
I wish that I was wrong about Quay Walker. Uh, it's, it's, it's obviously super fun to be right. Like I love Devonte Wyatt. So I'm kind of enjoying some of that stuff now. I, I, I enjoyed the, or I loved the Aaron Rodgers picks so that made like me following his career so much more fun. And, you know, I've gotten a million picks wrong too, but I, I never understood the Quay Walker pick. Um, I've been complaining for a long time about their insistence on using Keyshawn Nixon on defense and it just isn't working. It just isn't working. I, I think it's sort of one of two things. I think, uh, or, or not one of two things. I think it's different problems for each player. I think there's a way that you could use Quay. Um, I would play him on the outside. I certainly would stop playing him on the inside. I would probably blitz him more, um, maybe QB spy him a little bit more. But just as a read and react linebacker, I think we now have the proof in the pudding that just it's it's not it's not him. It's not going to be him, even if it's supposedly this Jeff Halfley one gap downhill in your gap scheme like that's still not working he's still one of the worst middle linebackers in the nfl despite every god-given athletic talent and gift that you could possibly ask for um i thought it was a huge red flag going in that just made no sense to me as a mike linebacker and through two games i mean it does look like that Keisha nixon i don't know what else there is to say um he was very, very, very not good again today. I don't know how else to, how else to put that. Um, I, I, I just, I, without then, and I mean, probably should have given up another key deal in, in uh, the AD Mitchell drop. Um, just, just brutal, man. Um, he gave up, excuse me, he was targeted nine times was Keyshawn Nixon, which is, you know, them basically circling him. He gave up five catches, gave up Green Bay's only touchdown, and then was also the beneficiary um, of three drops or off-target throws. And I'm going to break it all down for you in the film review because I'm, I'm going to just – I'm going to just cut up his the nine times they threw at him. That's exactly right. They were five of nine targeting Nixon, and they should have been eight of nine. I think it was two drops and one bad throw. It might have been two bad throws and one drop, but he was beat almost every time. And that that's after a game that he didn't play very well against the Eagles. And the, the problem, the, the, the thing that I struggle with the most is that this is at this point now? This is an unforced error. Okay, I I think it's it's a little bit brutal in that um, it sort of appears that this dynamic kickoff or whatever the NFL is calling this um, is not affecting the kickoff in the way that we had hoped, right? I think pe people kind of hope that this would, oh, this is going to bring back the kickoff. This is going to bring back, this is a huge part of the game. That has maybe not been the case. And unfortunately, um, Green Bay is kind of in, in for a, you know, they're, they're in. And Keyshawn Nixon's contract is fine, if he were a serviceable nickel and he's not, I think his contract was fine. If he was an all pro kick returner and the kick return was back, I think he was fine if he was a serviceable nickel, but he's not. And they've kind of, it seems like taken the, the kick return out of the game. I, I would have to look back at the specifics of, of that contract. In fact, I'll just pull that up now. Um, they're not going to release him this year. I, I, I can promise you that, but I don't think it's great. Okay, so it's a, it's it's six million guaranteed on a three year eight million. I mean, they they basically can get out of it after this year. There's there's some dead cap there. They can get out of that deal after this year. It, it just it, it doesn't look good. It wasn't. I hated it at the time. I thought there was way better ways to spend six million bucks a year. Um, yeah, I he, he doesn't cover. <laughs> I I don't know how to how to put it other than that. Like this is plenty of evidence that that he doesn't cover and and um so i think there's specific things that you could do with quay i don't know what you do with Keyshawn nixon i know there are people that think he can play safety i don't see that but you know i'd be willing to give it a look 
the, the reason that I say, though, unforced error is there are better options. Evan Williams played really good football yesterday. That, okay, fine. Javon Bullard, you're the new slot. Tomorrow, now, today. I, I've seen enough. I've seen Javon Bullard, Bullard do it at an extremely high level at Georgia. I, it's just time. It should be time. Um, on to the, my final takeaway from that game is this defense has a chance to really be for real. You know, I think they're 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 the only place that I would say that I'm really concerned because I, you know, talked about the Kansas City Chiefs, talked about a lot of teams that have done some, and 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 look, I get the San Francisco 49ers have done some big things too, and they do have good linebackers. They have invested in good linebackers. But I have seen the Chiefs win a championship under Spags with a different host of crappy linebackers. And I just think that the Packers are bad where it's okay to be bad. Um, the only spot where they're kind of bad, where it's not okay to be bad, in my opinion, is that nickel spot. I think you, you need to be better there. Um, folks are worried about the pass rush, and I get that. What I will say and what has sort of been spoken around the building and, and folks that I talk to that are still um, either speaking to the players on a daily basis or just around the program, they're mush rushing. Okay, They were mush rushing Anthony Richardson and Jalen Hurts. Now, of course, there are calls when it's like, no, go, go, go. But they were trying to contain two of the better, more mobile quarterbacks in the NFL. So you look at you know, the, the guys that were hoping for big things from like Preston, Sean Gary, Van Ness, and Igbari, and you don't see a lot of pass rush production. And I'm not necessarily completely excusing that. I'm not. Uh, but what I will say is if they are mush rushing, that's a completely different thing than a jet rush. It's a completely different thing than a, hey, pin our ears back and let's go get the quarterback. If they're really trying to contain a rich, if they're really trying um, to contain Jalen Hurts, that's that's a different style of defense and and for for them to give up 10 points in a game where and it caused multiple turnovers great eric wilson was great right xavier mckinney is just so night and day better um than than what everything that they had at safety last year that evan williams played well thought we we got some good jaw um in this game and i thought it was a nice little comeback from the interior of the defensive line um Andy Herman's grades and PFF's grades kind of differ on, on a few things. I, I saw some much better reps from Kenny Clark, put a couple of those on X. Um, but I just thought that this was a really promising performance. And that's a real offense, guys. Jonathan Taylor, Alec Pierce, Michael Pittman Jr., a, a very real offensive line. I would put some of that on Steichen, honestly. I was looking at this. I mean, the Colts were the Colts were 18 carries for 140 yards, averaging 17.8 a carry. It it is beyond me that Anthony Richardson brought back to pass 34 times. Other than they, the, the Colts were constantly in negative games game script. I mean, it was 10 nothing. Um, it was 16 three for for big chunks of that game. Um, but ultimately, I'm just excited to see what this team can be. I think point three is really about the defense, but but it's it's about everything, man. Um, you can see how well their run concepts can work when there's almost no threat of the pass. They were really good offensively against the Eagles. They didn't get the job done. They didn't get the W. They were really good offensively against the Eagles. If you could marry, and, and you're not, because you're not going to score 55 points, but if you could marry the ability to run the ball in a creative way, even when they know you're going to run it, which they just won a game against the Indianapolis Colts doing that, with the second half of the season love in which theoretically should be better because you're adding a Josh Jacobs, you're adding uh, or, or you're, and then you're basically taking like an experience development track for Kraft, Musgrave, Watson, Dobbs, Wicks, Reed, like everybody's gotten one year better in theory. And you, you, you take that cohesion in the pass game and maybe unlock that boy you marry that to what they were just able to do in the run game, they could be really special on offense. And we just saw, we just saw what they can be um, on defense guys. Thanks so much for watching or listening. If you're on the podcast side, uh, check me out. I'm at Ross Suggle on X formerly known as Twitter. Uh, do everything you're supposed to do right here on the pack day podcast, YouTube channel, like subscribe, click the bell, get the notifications so that you can get 
every bit of Packers content you require on a daily basis. Have a great day. Watch for the film review piece tomorrow. Go Pack Go.